Okay, so let me get a, let me, I just landed and I got a, the final leg that I'm flying from Pierre to Desmonez, Iowa. So let's get that in. All right, so we've got a flight plan that we're gonna, that I'm gonna transfer from Sky Vector. Okay, so I've got, uh, let's see, cancel, I'm already in PL. All right, so I need to add an airway. I'm trying, I'm rushing because I want to catch a little bit of this light. I want to lay, uh, take off in the light. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me just remove this guy here. Uh, yeah, so let's remove that one. Um, let's remove this one too. And then we'll add our location. Now I can add um, I think this is what I was looking for uh, and that's why I couldn't get my my airway. okay now we're cooking with gas. All right and we're gonna exit it at OTM. Atama, Atama. <laughs> okay. Load that, and I'm gonna pick up um, Victor 52, and exit at DSM. Delta Sierra Mike. Load that, and we will. Um, we should have our airport in sight at that point. And so we got our flight plan. Let's get rid of it. And turn on some taxi lights. Okay, they're hard to see. Recognition lights are on. Okay, strobes are off, taxi is on. We're good to go. And my hat button on my honeycomb yoke is misbehaving. So I've already talked with honeycomb, I communicated with him. Um, I say talk, but it was by email. And let's get back on the runway. Uh, come on, hat button. It, it kind of sticks sometime now. Um, let's get back on the runway and head off into the great blue yonder. All right. And I'm not going to make the radio call. I could. I guess I could. Um, well, I got a tower there. So with a tower, it would be... Um, Pierre Tower, Pilatus 9875, ready to taxi. And then they would tell me where to taxi to, in which case it would be 3 1. Um, at least that's what I landed on. Taxi to runway 3 1. Now I. Um, cross runway 31 and taxi via Mike Delta Echo cross runway 04 Pilatus 9875 Foxtrot Whiskey uh, Pilatus 9875 Foxtrot <laughs> okay so all right guys Frank here your virtual general aviation aviator and I was sitting here flying and not recording, so I thought I'd just go ahead and do a quick leg, uh, record this last leg. Uh, so I'm going to cross here. 
I got two runways to cross, and the tower told me I can cross both of them. Um, so, L uh, Echo, and then I'm going to make a right turn on Mike. And I got some crazy winds. And it's okay to cross this runway here. Of course, I do want to clear left and right. Um, my hat button sticks, and I literally have to jiggle my my yoke, okay, so I can cross O2, and I'm clear that way, and uh, the hat button sticking. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's kind of to an abrupt stop. And uh, maybe I shouldn't do any recordings until I get this hat button straightened out. It has literally got me upside down. All right. So I did the smart thing. I pulled off on the, if I couldn't see, got the, distracted to the point where I couldn't see. I pulled off into the grass and stopped. Um, actually, I tried to stop. I just stopped and wound up in the grass. But that beats just taxi and blind. Okay. And it is getting dark. It's, uh, I'm out in the Midwest. Um, I'm at my desktop sim on the east coast so it is totally dark outside but the sun is just now going down in the midwest and stop here and i'm not dialing in frequencies um maybe i should why not since I can uh, map uh, all right so tower is one two four and departure is one one four point six okay Pit, uh, Piera Tower, Pilatus 9875 Foxtrot is holding at runway 31, ready to depart to the west. Cl uh, clear for takeoff, runway 31, Pilatus 9875 Foxtrot. All right, so I'm clear for takeoff. So let's, let's condition. Uh, come on, guy. This condition level go to four. Flaps go to takeoff. And this, this is kind of annoying. Um, thank God that honeycomb is going to replace my my yoke okay um so taxi lights can go off strolls can come on landing lights can come on uh, power to take off and this is an fs economy flight um I'm not picking up too much rent on the East Coast. So I'm thinking that if I move the aircraft to the West Coast, then I can rent it a little bit more. Rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Enjoy your flight. Uh, And flaps up. And 
I am way out of trim, obviously, because I'm having to pull way back on this yoke to, to get it airborne. Actually, I was kind of low on power also. All right. So, we're airborne. And let's go ahead and start our, you know, engage our yaw damper. Okay. And our flight director. And now flight director wants me to turn to the left and let's see we don't want to engage this autopilot with this guy pointed down because right now we would descend at 2,000 feet per minute which is not what we want um, feet per minute is what I'm looking for and uh, let's make this 1800 which is technically the max for this guy uh, let's get that All right, let's find that click spot There we go. All right, and we're climbing. Let's see, we got 187 nautical miles on this flight, so um, we'll keep it VFR and climb to 12.5. Um, and ah, uh, shoot, I didn't, I didn't arm it, so I have to put the climb rate back in. I did it remember everything it did okay good deal all right let's engage uh, autopilot and we're hands off now normally I would not have had to to I wouldn't have made such a lousy takeoff except for um, I didn't really plan out this flight and at the last minute I just decided to take off and record it. But the good part about sims is landings are optional. In the real world takeoffs are optional, landings are mandatory. In the sim world both takeoff and landings are optional okay so i'm flying a gps course and right now i'm intercepting my course so i should be tracking toward the magenta line and then once i get there the aircraft is going to turn to the right so and you can see that illustrated here uh, I'm sorry, it's going to turn to the left. So you can see that illustrated here. Whoops. And I am mighty slow on this climb out. You got climb power in. Well, I'm heavy. Um, one thing about FXE is <clears throat> it does adjust the weight and balance on the aircraft and I've got 10 passengers and I think each passenger is well I'm, I'm about I'm about to say something and I don't really know I don't really know how much weight FX economy um, attribute to a passenger but whatever it is, it's that times 10 plus myself. So there are 11 souls on board. 
so the aircraft is heavy and relative to how it normally climbs, it feels heavy. Okay. So let's check our let's see how that that hat switch just run away with my view. All right, so we are doing 12. So let's raise this guy up a little bit. All right. And it's climbing at six. It's pressurizing at a climb rate of 600 feet per minute. I'm, um, I'm sorry, 1,100 feet per minute. And I'm climbing at about 1,100 feet per minute. So that's pretty consistent. Sorry about the graphics and the uh, STMA uh, Pilatus PC-12, the the, um, the graphics are, is not crystal clear. Um, if I flew the Coronado version, then everything would be crystal clear, but so many more systems work in the STA version of the Pilatus PC-12. Oh, look at that nose up attitude. Let me check some things because I look mighty high on that nose up. Um, this says a thousand feet per, oh, that's right, I'm high. And um, plus I've got plenty of fuel. So, so yeah, I'm just really heavy. Um, but I'm only going up to 12.5. Now this aircraft has a service ceiling of 29 and I'm not so sure it would have been able to get there. Um, I do have a warning light on and it's warning me about my cabin pressure. Okay, so um, turn the oxygen on because I will black out. Well, not at 12.5, but um, without oxygen at higher altitudes. Um, I will could black out All right, cabin pressure. So what's going on with my cabin pressure, guys? Um, let's just increase this. I'm not sure which is increasing, which is not. Um, And, but I got a cabin pressure warning, so I may need to do 10.5. Well, I can do 12.5. I don't want. I don't want to go any higher. Definitely don't want to go any higher than 10.5. Okay, so I'm capturing my my 12.5 now. And I've had this aircraft pretty full before and it wasn't this sluggish so I am wondering what's going on so I got a 22 knot um, hit wind Okay. So at this point, I am going, rather than have you sit here and ride with me, I am going to speed up the video. Um, 
I got a tendency of making thoughts and getting distracted and not circling back to the original thoughts. So there was something that I was saying earlier and I got distracted and I can't recall what it was to circle back to. But anyway, um, let's just take a quick outside view before I what's going on with my hmm. recognition lights are definitely on and I should have killed them before 10,000 feet so let's get them Let's get him out of here. There we go. This is what I'm looking for. Okay, recognition off. Uh, landing, okay, probes on. Uh, everything looks good up there. And we are at cruising speed, so I'm happy with the speed. Not, I'm still not sure why I am have a cabin pressure issue. Um, they're going to run away hat switch. These, I don't think, are modeled. The breakers are not modeled. So I don't have to worry about breakers in this aircraft. Um, hmm. And so let's just turn the pressure up and down and let's set it for about 13 and I know you can't see this but uh, I well let's zoom in on it for you so I got the cabin pressure controller set at about 13 um, and it should be pressurizing the cabin at about 4,000 feet. Now, I don't have any doors open so I guess I should put the, um, the aircraft in the shop and have them take a look at it done out of troubleshooting I can do but 12.5 is going to be my max until that's resolved all right so at this point let's just sit back and enjoy
enjoy a sunset together and we are about 20 miles 22 nautical miles from Desmonez I have to move this yoke in order to get my hat button to work and even still it locks up on me and it's actually have, has gotten a lot worse um, but anyway I digress um, it will be fixed soon okay so there's our airport up up there we're at 7,000 miles so uh, 7, 700 uh, 7,000 feet and we need to increase our descent so let's get down to uh, let's see what our field elevation is So the field elevation is 1950, um, I'm sorry, uh, 958, so I can call pattern 2000, that'll give me roughly um, 1000 feet above the runway. Uh, so let's get down to pattern. Um, I've already dialed in my frequencies and let's just kind of preview. Um, actually, we need to get our ATAS, so let's go ahead and get that. Okay, so we're going to do two, three, and let's go to Elliott Aviation. So when we land, we'll probably exit 2971. I don't want to forget that. Okay, we'll probably exit on to Delta uh, to, the, to the right. All right. And let's get rid of this guy, 2971. Okay, and we want 2,000. So let's just kill that and dial it in manually. Actually, I'm gonna have to, to take this off. And uh, I am going to do a VFR. A VFR landing. All right, so we want it three one and three one is going to be, uh, let's see, it should be this guy here at the top. Yeah, so let's. Uh, Let's do a downwind and we'll do a left downwind for runway 31. And of course, that's what we will um, assume that that's, well, that's the vector that, that they're going to give us. And we want. 2,000, so we need a thousand to um, 1,500 to go, basically. And let's see if we can adjust our seat a little bit, so we can see the airport. I mean. I, well, at least lean our head so we can see the airport. And kill off some of this airspeed. Uh, 
All right. So we can turn. Uh, let's see. We can turn downwind any time now. So let's go ahead and turn. Make our downwind turn. Well, no. Uh-uh. That's three one is gonna be the other end. I had it wrong. Um, so we we just make we could do a right base, but it but we won't be stable. Um, so what do we want to do? Let's do a let's do a circle to land here. Uh, I'm making up an entry. <laughs> Uh, I am making it up as I go, right? <laughs> uh, but, ah, come on. But apparently this runway here is 3-1. And that's what we want. So, so let's just circle. Actually, what I should have did, and would it, which would have been more proper, is flown over the runway and then did the teardrop. But that's not what I did. All right, let's get into gear range. Peel back on this power. Is my autopilot still on? Nope, but it feels like it. Uh, let's see, y'all damper. Okay, let's get some gear down. A little left rudder to point that nose in the direction that I want it. Speed is turn up. Probably will overshoot the all right, put a little power back in and uh, and uh, where's my three one? Let's see. I think I lost it. Yep, there it is. Okay, so I am not stable. This is a go around. Yeah, just go around here. Uh, I took my yoke off my desk today. So that I could get this, some numbers for honeycomb, honeycomb, some serial numbers, and it wants to come loose. So, okay. So, turn crosswind here. I'm not. I can, it's not crosswind. No. Actually, the runway I lined up with wasn't 3 1. Let's see. It's that the runway I lined up with looks like it was. Maybe it was 3-1, but because I'm flying a court 8, I'm flying 3-1 now. I think I had it right the first time. I'm not sure. Uh, once I look at this, then I'll be able to figure out what I did. All right, so I'm, I need to stay in the pattern. Um, stay in the 
in the pattern um, attitude in the well don't don't want to get too high I need to stay around 2000 and okay so this if this was 3 1 or what I thought was 3 1 and actually so let me just fly this down when like I should have the first time I had it right the first time but then I looked at my I looked at my um, compass and it didn't look like I was it looked like it was on the other end oh well I want to tell myself that in real life I would have had more references so I, I wouldn't make these types of mistakes but but I don't know I just just may be that that pilot that that need the additional training okay so I'm on downwind and um, should be out far enough think I'm gonna curve out with this highway uh, turn base over this over this highway and I just wanna I just don't want to get down to 2000 do I all right Look at our compass and bring it back to 3 1. And okay. Okay, you're down. Laps are down also. Now, which is the runway? Mind up the taxiway here. Lights. Well, I botched this one. Ah, <laughs> prop strike. <laughs> oh. Well, you know what? What's cool is I can still get paid. <laughs> and I'm at the airport. I can put the aircraft in the, sh in the shop. Oh, what the devil did I, my gear is down. Thank you for flying. Bye-bye. Let's see. Now, why am I... Okay. Let's see. Let's look at our weight and balance. Um, okay, weight and balance says I'm okay. Payload, even though they always put the weight in the aircraft, I don't see it here. Uh, my 10 passengers. But anyway, I did get paid, and I am ashamed of this landing. 
But that's why I'm in a sim. Um, well, what can I say? I'm trying to figure out a way to put lipstick on this pig and it's just not happening. But I think, you know, the aircraft did feel sluggish, didn't want to, to, to climb like it normally did. Um, so maybe there was something going on that, that I can say that I can blame it on. So, so yeah guys, that botch landing was not my fault. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, Virtual General Aviation Aviator. Hope you enjoyed it and until we do it again, ciao.